Let's now start thinking about conditional probability and one of the cornerstones of understanding how do we go about looking at conditional probability. There are lots of formulae given. I would urge you to just forget the formulae as we go along. We will try and solve this entire bit without touching any formula. Fine. Let's read this. The probability of an event occurring given that another event has occurred is known as conditional probability. Fine. So for example, probability of India winning when Sachin scores 100 or vice versa. It's a kind of conditional probability. Let's define a problem and try and solve that. So the problem is given here. It is seen that conditional probability of Sachin scoring a century when India wins is 36%. When India wins a match, it's 36%. The probability of India winning the matches is 50% and Sachin scores centuries in 20% of all Indian matches, regardless of whether India has won a match or not won a match. We now have to kind of convert this into a tree-like structure, right? So a tree-like structure would basically mean something like, what is the total sample size? Let's say 100 matches. What is the probability of India winning, India losing? and such and scoring, such and not scoring, such and scoring, such and not scoring. That's what has to come here. So what would come in would look something like this. We have the total number of matches, India winning or losing, such and hitting 100, not hitting 100, hitting 100, not hitting 100. So there are four possible outcomes. Such and hits 100 and India wins. Such and doesn't hit 100 and India wins. Such and hits and it's 100 and India loses and Sachin doesn't hit 100 and India loses. Fine. What has been given to us is that the probability that Sachin hits 100, the conditional probability of Sachin scoring a century when India wins is 36%. That's given to us. So when India wins, 36% of the times that India wins, Sachin scores 100. So 36% of the times India wins, you have a Sachin 100. Out of all of India's wins, 36% of the times you have a Sachin 100. Fine. Let's deal with this. Let's assume that the total number of matches is 100. Our task now is to first create this tree. Once you have created this tree, you can practically answer any question about it. There's no, no problem around it. Now, we have seen that there is a 50% probability of India winning a match, right? That's what given. India winning matches in the sample given is 50%, right? So out of 100 matches, India wins 50, India loses 50, correct? Now, what we have also been given that when India wins, 36% of the times out of those matches, Sachin scores 100. So India wins 50 matches. 36% of these 50 matches, he scores a century. So 36% into 50 is equals to 18 matches is when Sachin hits 100 out of these 50 matches. 18 by 56 would be, 18 by 50 would be 36%, correct? The remaining 32 matches, he does not hit 100. We have also been given that Sachin scores hundreds in 20% of India's matches, total matches, which means he must have scored hundreds in 20 matches, correct? Now that he has scored 100 in 20 matches and 18 of those have come when India wins, two must have come when India did not win. And hence, 48 times when India loses, he doesn't hit a century. 18 times when India wins, he scores a century, correct? So we have created a tree which can now practically solve any of the questions that come to us. The questions could be on joint probability, event A occurring and event B occurring. The questions could be on conditional probability, event A occurring when event B occurs. The questions could be on something like Bayes theorem that given that A has occurred, what is the probability that B will occur? And we'll discuss all of them. So forget about uh, the terminologies that are being used. Just try and frame the question as we go along. So let's proceed to our Excel file and try and solve this question there. We have the Excel file here. Let's go to sheet number probability, sheet named probability. Right? So let's quickly create the structure. 
total matches is 100 out of this 50 India wins wins and 50 India loses right so let's align them centrally out of these 50 matches 18 matches Sachin scores 100 and 32 Sachin does not score 100 correct I can copy and paste this here two matches he scores 100 48 he doesn't correct that's what we had seen right so let me increase the font size slightly and this is the overall structure of the table that we have create the probability structure assuming 100 matches this is what would have happened out of 100 matches there is a 50% chance of India winning the match there's a 50% chance of India losing the match out of the matches that India wins 36% of the time Sachin scores 100 64% of the time he doesn't 4% of the times he scores 100 when we lose and 48 by 50 would be 96% of the times he doesn't score 100 you will note that the sum of these two probabilities is again 1 100% so let's look at that quickly if you are looking at the structure here the probability that Sachin scores and India wins is 36% and this one is 64 percent these are the only two things happens when India has won the match basically either he can score a century or not score a century the sum of these two will be one correct once again the probability that so sorry 2 divided by 50 is 4 percent and 48 divided by 50 is 96 percent when India loses the match there can again be just two mutually exclusive outcomes either Sachin can score a hundred or he may not score a hundred which again gives me four percent and ninety six percent correct so those are the four outcomes that we have and those are the probabilities that we have what is the joint probability of India winning a match and Sachin not scoring a hundred correct now how do we calculate joint probability let's look at this the first thing is the probability of India winning a match that is 50% and then the probability of Sachin not scoring a hundred is 64% PAB is equals to PA multiplied by PB basically this is what we are looking at so 50% multiplied by 64% which is equal to 32% even if you do not remember this formula forget the formula the probability of India winning a match and such and not scoring a hundred is 32 divided by hundred directly you don't need to remember any formula correct so if we remove all the formulae the probability joint probability that India has won a match and such and has not scored a hundred so India has won a match which is this part of the tree and such and has not scored a hundred which is this block 32 times out of 100 this has happened if you actually sum this 18 plus 32 plus 2 plus would be 100 out of these 100 times 32 times Sachin does not score a 100 and India wins a match so this answer would be 32 percent fine now what is the conditional probability of Sachin scoring a 100 when India loses a match fine so now we are we had first looked at the conditional probability that was given to us of Sachin scoring a hundred when India wins a match is 36 percent correct now we are looking at the conditional probability in another context that India has lost the match what is the probability that Sachin has scored a hundred conditional probability of Sachin scoring a hundred when India loses a match this is given by so India has lost the match the total number of outcomes where India has lost the match is 50 how many of those Sachin scores 100 this is 2 the answer is 4 percent which is calculated here this is the conditional probability of Sachin scoring 100 when India loses the match fine fine 
So let's look at this. We have uh, looked at 36 matches because the total matches we have looked at is 100. If this number was 200, we would have multiplied it by 36% into 200. Fine. So what we are talking about in percentage terms is given that there are 100 matches. So in this case, percentages and matches would remain the same. Fine. So the answer of the last question is 4%. Once we have solved this, we will move ahead with our understanding on some of the other concepts which would help us understand a bit more. And there will be one more problem that all of us will try and solve together. Now there is something called Bayes theorem which is basically the other way around. The formula for it is given here. Now this is a way of updating probabilities given some information. Forget the formula once again. Assume that we read in the newspaper the next day that Sachin has scored a hundred. So Sachin scored a hundred. Can we now find out whether India won the match or not? The match. And what is the probability of this? Basically Sachin scored a hundred and this is known to us. So Sachin scored a hundred is known to us. Now what is the probability that India won the match? Whether India won the match or not. So this is something that we'll have to figure out. Let's try and figure this out. The way it is given here is, I'll come to the formula in a moment. Let's go to our Excel file once again and try and understand this. So the next day in the morning, we read that Sachin has scored a hundred. Correct? How many times does Sachin score a hundred? Two and eighteen. So the total possible outcomes are 20. Fine. Total possible outcomes are 20. Given that Sachin has scored 100, what are the chances that India would have won the match? That's 18 times out of 20, India wins the match. So this answer is now 90%. If you have been given an information that Sachin has scored 100 already, what are the odds or what are the chances that India would have won the match? That's 90% of the times. Because out of the 20 hundreds that he has scored, 18 have come when India has won the match. So now you have changed the order of the information coming, correct? Look, look at this very, very conceptually. Earlier, we were given the fact that India has won or lost the match. So we are given this information and we are supposed to find this probability. So given that India has lost the match, how much are the chances that Sachin scored 100? That comes this way. In the second case, we have been given a new information. That new information says that Sachin has already scored 100. So this is given to us. This is to be calculated. And this is being done using something called as Bayes theorem. Forget about what it is and what the formulae are. If you want to learn the formula and how does that work, I will quickly explain that as well. But the more we look at the formula in this context, the more chances are that we will get confused around it. So let's look at the formula any which ways. We have to now find out the probability that India won given that Sachin scored a hundred. The formula for this is probability that Sachin scored given that India won, fine, which was in our case 36% divided by probability that Sachin scored 100, this was 20%, multiplied by the probability that India won, which was 50%, if you solve for this, this answer would be 90%. You do not necessarily need to remember this formula. As I said, the easiest way to calculate this is calculate the tree structure first. Once you have the tree structure available with you, it is a straightforward understanding. So let's quickly recap what we have done. Total number of matches is 100. 50 India wins, 50 India loses. We have been given that there is a 36% chance that if India wins a match, Sachin would have scored 100. So in 18 matches, Sachin scores 100. 32, he doesn't. Sachin in total scores 20% of the times when India scores, uh, India plays matches, 20% of the times he scores 100. So two must be coming here in losing causes, 48 like this. Now, under Bayes theorem, we are being given a fact that Sachin has scored a hundred. So either this has happened or this has happened, correct? So the total possible outcomes are 20. 
what are the chances that India would have won the match? 18 times out of his 20 centuries, India would have won the match. So if Sachin has scored a century, given that Sachin has scored a century, there is a 90% probability that India would have won the match. Fine, that's your base theorem.